evening, everyone. This is Brother Chris. This is a live recording of one of our video book studies on Saturdays and Sundays. On Saturday, it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning till noon. And on Sunday, it's from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, I'll send the description in the comments of how to join us if, if anybody wants to. Uh, let's see. I was waiting on one one more person to uh, come on come on board here. I'm trying to handle the soundboard and all these these wires, all this stuff. I, I hope I pray the Lord send us somebody that can help us. But uh, even if the Lord don't, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. All right. And everyone that's uh, in the book study group, you you all can text me. I want to ask all of you how. How is everybody doing? And everybody can text at the same time. I'll read them, read the messages. Yeah, I don't know if everybody's familiar with Pastor Benny Hinn from uh, Benny Hinn Ministries. He's He's got a powerful message we're going to watch because he, like myself, we talk on the cross, the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the things that you're not going to hear, hear many people talking about. And the scripture says that the preaching of the cross is to them that's going to perish foolishness. They don't want to hear it. And we will do what our Lord says. The, uh, the, the Lord Jesus, and Lord means master. He's our master. Our master said, do these things. And... He said, why, why do everybody, he said, why are you calling me Lord, Lord, Master, Master, and do not the things which I say? So, we, we will do what he say to do. And in one of the broadcasts, I showed this book I wrote. It's called, What Did Jesus Say to Do? According to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Revelation. And I titled it, The Action Words of Christ. I um, hi Olga. You can mute your phone. We're live on Facebook, and you can text me. Thank you. Um, I titled it "The Action Words of Christ," and I made this this book out of fear and trembling because the Bible says, "Work out your own salvation." Everybody has to work out their own salvation. You, the pastor can't get you in. He's got to have his own relationship with the Lord. And all the ministers have to have theirs. The deacons got to have theirs. And all the members have to have their own relationship with the Lord. The Lord says, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. But I made this book because of fear and trembling. Because the Lord says not every believer is going, going to enter into heaven. And when I saw that, I was like, why not, Lord? And he, he gives the answer in the scripture. He said, he that hear these sayings of mine and do them, I will liken him to a wise man that built his house upon a rock. So I said to him, I said, well, Lord, what did you say to do? 
and that's when I went on my search for every every word that it was an action word. If he said do it, I put it in this book. And I even got in the back like a uh, note section for if anybody find if if you find some more action words of Christ, put it in the note section that I didn't put in his book. And the whole purpose is to find out what did he say so we can do what he said. You know, he and he said, don't call him master, Lord, Lord, and don't do what he say. And, and one day he rebuked me. The, the good Lord rebuked me because I kept saying, Lord Jesus, and Lord Jesus, and you know how we pray, Lord Jesus, and he, he was like, why are you calling me Lord, and you're not doing the things which I say? Hi, Miss Jackie, nice to have you. If you can mute your phone and text, I don't think you text, do you, Miss Jackie, in the group text? I'll, I'll, yeah, please, yeah, please text us because we got more people on tonight and it's, it'll be a lot of feedback but if you can't um, text I would just love to hear your feedback because you always bless us with your comments all of you everybody any comment you make it is so precious you know so but let us pray let us pray bless father thank you for this day Lord, Father, we love you, and we, we want to show it. We don't want to just say it. We don't want to just say, uh, Dear Heavenly Dad, I love you. Because you, you more than likely will say, uh, No, you don't. You don't love me. And, and I don't want that to happen to me or anybody else, Lord, that's watching me or hearing me. So... We love you, Father, and we need your help. It's a lot of distractions down here on the earth, Father. We need you. We come before boldly. You told us come boldly before your throne of grace to receive mercy and grace to help. So here we are, Father. I gather together in the name of your holy child, Lord Jesus, the Prince of Life, the Holy One. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for praying for us up there. You ever lived to make intercessions for us, and I thank you. I appreciate you. I pray everyone that's hearing me will not be as if they're watching a TV show and just get into Thanksgiving, because we're, we're here with you, Father, in the throne. We all have agreed to ascend up to your throne. And we come in with thanksgiving. We come in saying, thank you, Father. The, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to your holy name, for your name is holy. Let your kingdom come, Father. Let your will be done in us, through us, as it is in heaven. Give us all this day our daily bread, Father. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive others who have done wrong to us and father whoever it is that you see we haven't forgiven i pray you bring it up let it come up and and and, and, and bother us until we forgive that person from the heart because you said unless we forgive you cannot forgive us so father forgive us i forgive everybody as far as i know father uh, and I forgive myself. One day you told me you haven't forgiven yourself, Chris. And I forgive myself for past failures. And it's a new day. It's a new day. All my faults are under the blood of the Lord Jesus. So thank you, Father, for forgiving me of my sins. Father, don't lead us into temptation. Don't give us over to the will of the enemy but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil hearts of unbelief that departs from the living God. Deliver us from self. Our own self is the enemy. Most people think the devil's the enemy, Father, but it's us. 
we're the enemy. Help us, Father, to deny our flesh. Help us to deny our flesh and to bring it under. Like you said, they that belong to Christ, they have crucified this flesh. So, Father, we come to you asking for strength. We need strength. We ask for more grace, your ability in us. We need you, Father. We need you. You told us to draw near to you, and you will draw near to us. And you said for us to cleanse our hands and purify our hearts. You who are of a double mind. We rebuke that double mind. We cast down that double mind. I will have nothing to do with that double mind. I renounce a double mind. Whoever's listening to me, you can do the same thing I'm doing. I command that double mind to be deactivated. That carnal mind be deactivated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will have the mind of the Spirit. And Father, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. And Father, I acknowledge the kingdom is yours, the power is yours, and the glory we will give to you. We vow to give you the glory. We will not touch your glory. To you be the glory, Father, Lord Jesus. Now, Father, we gather in the name of the Lord Jesus, and you said where there be two or three gathered together in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Nazarene, you are here in the midst of us. And you cannot lie, Father, so be it unto us according unto your word, Father. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Lord. You are here. And you have been showing up, Lord, and we appreciate you, Lord. If it's something in, in, in everyone's uh, homes that's grieving you and keeping you from coming in their home, show them. Lord, I pray they will ask you one day, and just say, Lord, if there's something here, show me why I don't feel your presence. But Lord, welcome, welcome, Lord. Come in, come in. I know you, you're already here. You've been here. But I just, out of respect, Lord, I'm inviting you in because you are a gentleman. You are not a pushy spirit. You are gentle and you are so pure and you are so kind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. So, Father, this we humbly ask, and we believe we have received, in the name of your holy child, Lord Jesus, the Holy One. Everyone who agreed, type amen, amen. Type amen. I'm looking at your comments. Thank you, Lord. Um, I'm going to start the video because it's only like 30 minutes long. It, it's 30 minutes. But afterward... You know, everyone who's been with us, we talk about it because we're on a two-hour frame. We're going from 7 to 9 o'clock, and we try to end exactly at 9 to respect everybody's time. If somebody needs to talk, you know, afterward, stay on stay on with us, and, and we'll talk about other things. So let me start uh, this video. If somebody, oh yeah, if somebody can't hear the video... We discovered all you got to do is hang up and and just hit the join button again, and usually it clears up. Uh, we've been trying to work out the bugs <laughs> with doing this, and I don't I don't even know how many people can come on a messenger call. If one of y'all know, you can type it in the comments. And thank you. So I'm gonna hit play. And I want you all to, um, I want everyone to, if you can't hear, just hang up and join the call. And I hope you can hear it. But if you can't hear it, uh, we'll send you the, the link and you can watch it later. But we want to, we really want to talk about this. Stand by.
Okay, I want to ask everybody in the group text, text me if you cannot hear that. If, if, if you can hear it, you don't have to text, but if you can't hear it, text me. So Dawn says she can't hear it. So who else can't hear the video? Can anybody hear the video? Um, you guys, you all can text me if you heard that video. Okay, Olga heard it. Don, you may have to hang up and call back. Miss Jackie, you, you got to hang up and call back. So Don and Miss Jackie, hang up and call back. That's, that's what we discovered with Messenger. And everyone else heard it. So I'm going to play it for the live viewers on Facebook. I got the video ready and I'm going to mute my phone and you all please watch it and we're going to discuss what we heard. If, if you all have a piece of paper by you, take some notes because I'm going to take notes too and jot down some things that, that I heard that really stood out. So we're here to learn that's what the Lord that's his will is that we we be students disciples of his word okay let me um, hit play and mute your phone Miss Jackie I think you unmuted there you go mute your phone and your cameras on there you go okay Mute your phone. Miss Jackie, mute your phone. I can see. There you go. Thank you. Thank Thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Powerful. Now, let's, let's look at what the Bible means by the world, the world. Now, Paul said <clears throat> in Romans 12, Be not conformed to this world, <clears throat> be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Which world did he mean? Because the Bible talks about three different worlds. Example number one, the world of nature. The earth is, is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. That's the world. That's the first thing we think about when we think about the world. <clears throat> That's in Psalm 24, verse 1 and 2. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. Or you think about uh, Psalm 8, verse 3, when the psalmist wrote, When I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have created, he said, What is man? You are mindful of him. For the Son of Man, you have visited him. So that's the first world that we, we think about. But then there's a second world world that the Bible talks about and that's the world of humanity for God so loved the world John 3 16 that he sent his only begotten son so that's the second world now when Romans 12 2 says be not conformed to this world it's not talking about the planet like Psalm 24 verse 1 the earth is the Lord's the fullness thereof it's not even talking about the world of men, humanity, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. It's talking about 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4, because it, it, there is here the third uh, meaning of what does the world mean when it comes to the Bible. So when we say the world, when the Bible speaks of do not be conformed to this world, it means the world of evil. Now, in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, it says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which
which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, whose the image of God should shine unto them. Do you also remember the word where the Lord called Satan the prince of this world? So we're talking now about the third world that the Bible talks about, which is the system, uh, the world order would be maybe a better way to say it. So the world order is the system that controls the thinking and behavior of mankind. So you have the first world, Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's fullness thereof. That's a good one. Then you have the second world, the Bible talks about, for God so loved the world, meaning humanity, he gave his begotten son, who are a part of humanity. But now there's a third world, which is satanic. Satan is the prince of this world, third world. So what is he prince over? He's prince over the world order. He's, he's, he's not the, the God of the planet because the earth is the Lord's. The earth belongs to God. The fullness thereof belongs to our Heavenly Father. So that cannot mean that Satan is the, is the God of this planet. He's the God of the world order. The world order. So th that's a very important thing to keep in mind. So Satan is the mastermind uh, behind the world order. That's why Paul calls him in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, he's the God of this world. So this is the world we are commanded not to be a part of. So let's go to 1 John, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. And yes, I'm talking about how to be transformed into the image of Jesus and not be conformed to the world order. World order. So in 1 John 2, 15, love not the world. Now which world then is this talking about? The world order. Love not the world because we are to love, you know, think about uh, the beauty in this earth. This is our Heavenly Father's world. This is His planet. The earth is the Lord's. Now, we are to love humanity. For God loved the world. Then we are to love also humanity. But this portion of the Bible in 1 John 2, uh, uh, 1 John 2 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So it's very clear then that he's not talking about Psalm 24, 1. He's not talking about John 3, 16. He's talking about the world order, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. That Satan has a world on this planet called the system of the world, the world order that controls the 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 thinking, the thinking of humanity controls the behavior of humanity. So we are not to love what? The thinking of the world. The behavior of the world. That's what the Bible means by love not the world. So the Lord Jesus said in John 15, you remember we just read it earlier, the world will hate you. Well, again, it's, he's talking about the world that Satan controls. The world will hate you. That world of the devil will hate you. That world order will hate you. The thinking of the world, the behavior of the world. And that's important. So he said, I have chosen you out of the world. I have chosen you out of what? The system. I have chosen you out of the world order. I've chosen you out of the world's thinking. I've chosen you out of the world's behavior. I did not choose you to come out of the earth or come out of humanity. I chose you to come out of the world system, the way they are ruled by this 
mastermind called Satan the devil. So, now, and I'm glad I explained that to you. Maybe some of you never heard, uh, heard that or maybe thought about it. But that's what the Bible means when it says the world be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So let's ask the question of why are we here? Now, why did not God simply take us to heaven after being born again? Why did he allow us to stay under this system? Um, when Hitler invaded France, France was in the Second World War. France was overwhelmed by the Germans, by the Nazis. They took over the country. So French citizens came under the influence of the Nazis. Their world changed. Their thinking now was controlled by the thinking of what the Nazis wanted them to think. So they were, in many ways, controlled by a whole different uh, system, a, a, a different power that wanted to control the French people. And they had to fight it. They had, they had to stay French men and French women, not come under the control of the Nazis. Hitler brought in a world into Germany that brought destruction to Germany. So there's a big difference between the people and the system that rules the people. We are not to let this system of Satan rule our lives. So be not conformed to the system that Satan wants you to come under and be, be a part of. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it's all about, um, you know, how, you, how, how people uh, think, how people behave. So why are we here? A very important question. Um, God uses this conflict we are in. God uses the, the, the system that is controlling the world to shape us. To, to transform us into conquerors. Uh, it actually prepares us for rule. It prepares us for authority. Uh, the people who fought Hitler, like the Gaulle, Charles de Gaulle in France, and I'm using that just as an example, he became the president of France by fighting the Nazis, by opposing the rule of Hitler. Think about what happened to Winston Churchill, who fought the, the mentality that the Nazis uh, wanted to bring into England. He fought them and he conquered and became the great Prime Minister of England. And, and it was his voice and speeches that, that kept the British people uh, bold and strong. So we are, we are in this world, uh, this whole world is controlled by a mastermind that is completely demonic, satanic. But we are here as God's people to develop, to grow, to become strong, to be prepared for rule. So like Charles de Gaulle was prepared to rule France by fighting the Nazis. And we have to fight to prove ourselves worthy of rule, worthy of authority. So God allowed that to happen and kept us on this earth. He didn't take us home when we were saved. He said, no, I need to, to, to train them to be conquerors. So uh, the Bible tells us, and like I've been saying from Romans 12 to, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the, renewing, by the renewing of your mind. So the believer is in this world uh, to make a choice. You and I are here in, in this world to make a choice, to be conformed or to be transformed. Or you join the system or you oppose the system and win and be transformed into the image of Jesus. So a lot of Christians today have chosen to be conformed to the world. They, they don't want 
to be transformed into the image of Jesus and you hear it all the time that's why there's a, a great falling away today so um, Romans 12 2 here's one translation that you'll like very very much uh, on this it says now this is a different translation than the King James translation don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold so when you think about King James says, be not conformed to this world. I like this other translation that says, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold. But be renewed by the renewing of your mind. And here's this other translation that says, let God make you so that your whole attitude of mind is transformed. Your whole attitude of mind is transformed. I love that. So, whether we are conformed or whether we are transformed depends on really what we fill our mind with. Quite simple. So, to be conformed, people fill their mind with the world system. Then they, they, they go back into it. Or to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, you have to fill your mind with God's thoughts, God's word. So we live, we live in two kingdoms. Uh, kingdom number one is is uh, ruled by human wisdom, by that satanic influence. He's the mastermind behind it. Uh, ruled by human reason. And then the second kingdom that we believers should live in is God's kingdom. But let's look first, let's look first at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Because Paul talks about, Paul the apostle talks about the, the system that uh, people come under and uh, they, let, they let that system control them. Not realizing... Uh, that the, it's 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 all humanistic, humanistic. Satan uses the humanistic uh, system to control people's lives. So let's look at First Corinthians one, beginning at verse seventeen, right through twenty-one. It says, "For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect." For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So the world is ruled by human reason, human wisdom. And when people begin to reason and they want to understand things without faith, they go backwards into the world's thinking, into the world's ways. The kingdom of God is ruled by faith. The world is ruled by reason and by human wisdom that has to understand everything before they believe it. Now in God's kingdom, Jesus is the center. In God's kingdom, Jesus is the center. In, in, in the world, self is the center. You see, say, the devil Satan is very smart. He, he hides himself real good in that he doesn't reveal himself. He's promoting the human, the humanistic system. He's promoting self. He favors humanity or the ways of man. That's what Jesus said to him. He said, you favor the things of man, not, not the things of God. So it's really important in 
that's when the Lord rebuked, remember when he said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. He said, you favor the things of men. So uh, Satan's plan is to make man God. That's his plan. The humanistic idea has been there for a long time in this world. So um, what, what I love about the kingdom, we are in the kingdom of God. Uh, you enter it by being born again. Because Jesus said in John 3, verse 3 and, and verse uh, 5, the Lord said, Verily I say unto you, very well, I said to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then in verse 5, very, very, I say to you, or the truth, the truth, I tell you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is spirit um, rule and spirit thinking. In fact, Paul, the Holy Spirit, he rules the life of that individual and the thinking of that individual is ruled by the Holy Spirit. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12, Paul explains what it means to enter the kingdom. He said, now we have received not the spirit of the world, the kingdom of God. Now once we are born again, we are in it, but now this is what happens. We, we begin to receive the Spirit of God. So he says, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, or the system, we've been talking about that, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know, we might know, the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And now, of course, he's showing the two systems. And then he says in verse 14, but the natural man will not receive the things of the, of the Spirit of God or the thinking of the kingdom of God. They're foolishness to him. And he, 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 he cannot know them because they are spiritually discerned. So the, the, the system of the world, uh, they are mentally discerned. But the system of God is spiritually discerned. That's the difference. So a lot of people, when they begin to depend on their mind to understand it, not their hearts to believe it, they go backwards. So when Paul said, be not conformed to this world, he meant do not think like the world thinks. Do not reason like they reason. Don't let that worldly wisdom that has to see it, to believe it, get into you. It says the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God because of foolishness to that, to that person. Because he cannot know them. They are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things that he himself is judge of no man. So, Paul here talks about how we have the mind of Christ. Well, the mind of Christ is the mind of faith. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual mind. We, 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 we really have to grasp this. It's so important. It's, it's, it's the way we finish this life that matters. It's the way we finish the race we're in that matters. And, and this is where it all starts. And this is really... It's very important that we understand how to bring it under the influence of the Holy Spirit because today in this in this world the, the war that rages is raging in the mind of, of humanity and we win the war we win the war if we do exactly what the Bible says because I have found it over many years and years of study and research on what does the Bible really say about this life how, how can I live a, a godly, holy life in this wicked world that wants to always put me back into it. Lord, thank you for your word. I pray you'll bless your people richly, Lord, with this. I pray that they'll be blessed today and I pray you'll bless them even more tomorrow. Establish them in you, in you, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right.
it's time to give to the Lord the work. Now, you know, I 